is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are so. The calendar says April, but it feels like mid-February, a very chilly night in Atlanta as we celebrate April in the ATL, 30 games in 30 days. Tonight it's game three of the season as Nick Markakis and the Atlanta Braves play host to the winless St. Louis Cardinals who are coming off a three-game sweep at the hands of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, welcome to the ballpark. Tonight, tonight, we hope that the Braves get into the win column, and who better to send to the mound than Matt Whistler, who's pitched very well against these rampaging Redbirds. Somebody's going to get their first win tonight. Yeah, hopefully it is the Braves. Matt Whistler last year at the end of the year really pitched great baseball. He pitched like the guy the Braves were anticipating getting when they made the deal with the Padres last year. For his work, the last three starts of the year, a 119 ERA, a 3 0 record. He came within an out of getting a complete game shutout of these Cardinals in the last game of the season. He's pitched very well against St. Louis in his career. He looks like a different man, a man that belongs in the big leagues. Let's see what Matt Whistler has in store for us as we open a big weekend against the Cardinals tonight in Atlanta. Atlanta Braves baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. And Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. is sponsored by Delta Airlines, your local Ford dealer, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. Nice crowd on a breezy Friday night in Atlanta as we take our first look at Mike Matheny and his St. Louis Cardinals. They come to town 0 and 3. So far this season they are an injury riddled ball club but have a lot of big time thumpers in their lineup most notably Matt Carpenter who hit 28 home runs out of the leadoff spot for St. Louis last year Matt Whistler gets the ball for the Braves Joe and as you said Matt pitched great in his final starts last season and he looked terrific all spring as well. 
23 years old, 6'3", 205, pitching with a lot of confidence. One thing about last season, though, lefties wore him out by comparison to right-handers. He worked this winter, and especially in spring training, on developing his changeup, one that Tom Glavin helped him with, and he will talk about that. We've got some audio from spring training about how he's going to try to keep the ball down. So we'll see if that changeup is effective against the three lefties in the lineup tonight. One of them's Carpenter who gets things started for the Cardinals and on the breezy night takes a ball outside. Carpenter like so many of his Cardinal teammates off to a frigid start at the plate. St. Louis is a team hitting just a buck sixty eight and scored seven runs against Pittsburgh. That's hit in the air towards center in Ciarte drifting back and hauls it in over the right shoulder and there's out number one. Part of what I just talked about with that change up is part of the Ford keys to pitching success tonight. He's got to utilize that in good counts not be afraid to throw it when he's behind in the count as well and be aggressive with his Cardinal club as you just said they were struggling in Pittsburgh they struck out a ton and they took a lot of third strikes. Thirty seven strikeouts for this Cardinal offense and a first pitch swing by Stephen Piscotti with the wind blowing toward right. Nick Marquez hauls that in for the second out. One of the keys for Atlanta has to be better defense. The first two games, I think the Braves were disappointed in how they handled and threw the baseball. Let's see how things go tonight. Tyler Flowers makes his debut behind the plate. Gordon Beckham with a lefty on the mound gets the start at second base. Freddie Freeman a little bit under the weather the last couple of days is again at first base. We'll see how he fares against the Cardinals. Here's Matt Holliday. He's one for ten to start his year, and Mike Michlinski, the plate umpire, raises the right arm for a called strike. When we saw Whistler in spring training, he had good life on his fastball. 92 or 93 was where he sat most of his work the day we saw him in Orlando. Holiday shoots one toward the gap, and Ciarte's not going to get that. That'll roll up to the fence. And Matt Holiday has a two-out double here in the top of the first inning. Doesn't matter if Matt Holiday's swinging a hot bat or not, Joe. He loves hitting in this ballpark, and that was a rocket. And he got a good fastball to hit one right there in the middle of the plate. Tyler Flowers wanted that in on his hands, didn't get it there. And one thing about Holiday and his success in the big leagues is that he has used the whole field he can drive the ball out of the ballpark just about anywhere. He's a 307 lifetime hitter. He is Matt Holiday. And he's in scoring position for Matt Adams the Cardinal first baseman. Adams missed a lot of time last year. Ninety one games in fact with a right quadriceps tear. Did hit five homers, knocked in 24 in limited duty. Shift on for him. Holiday a good lead out at second. And that hit Adams on the shoe top. So a hit batsman after the two out double. Adams will limp to first base, and the Cardinals have a threat with two outs. Two quick outs, then the double and the one hop plunking. I don't think it got him on the fly, did it? They've got him right on the toe. So a torn quad last year and now a bruised foot. And it's really going to slow Adams down. Stay hot. <laughs> As Randall Gritchick comes on. Cardinals got him from the Angels for David Freeze a couple years ago, and this guy can really hit. Richard was quite a fine for the Redbirds. 17 homers in 103 games last year and 47 extra base hits. Yeah, I liked him a lot when we got to see him. Big part of why they won 100 games. One ball, no strikes. And that'll be back into the seats. Foul even count for Randall Gritchuk. Different look to this Cardinal team without Jason Hayward in the outfield. Hayward turned down a big contract offer from the Cardinals and instead signed with the Cubs. Nice 
On one pitch. Caught a corner, one and two. 93 on the corner. Got to like that. Richard out of Rosenberg, Texas. Two on, two out. And Flowers smothered that even count. St. Louis originally was going to have Matt Holiday play first base this year. Played a lot there in the spring. And then in the first inning of their first game in Pittsburgh, Tommy Pham, the guy who was going to play left field, got hurt. So they scrapped that plan. Holiday's back and left, and Adams is at first. Swing and a miss. Gritchick comes up empty, and Whistler escapes. Two out trouble in the top of the first. Braves try to break through in their first turn. Jaime Garcia is coming up. Whistler off to a good start at home. In the top of the first, here come the Braves looking for their first win of the season and a couple of notable changes for Freddy Gonzalez with left hander Jaime Garcia on the mound. And those changes are at the bottom of the batting order. Tyler Flowers makes his Braves debut. Gordon Beckham gets his first start. And the Braves are facing a ground ball machine in Jaime Garcia, an oft injured Joe, but very talented Redbird left hander. Yeah, he missed a lot of last year after having thoracic outlet surgery back in July of 2014. But when he came back, he came back strong, especially his last 12 starts, a 274 ERA and a very low batting average against him. You're right, a lot of ground balls, a lot of double plays behind him. He doesn't give up many home runs, sinker slider type guy who really hasn't evolved into the pitcher they expected him to be when he first arrived on the scene. And a lot of that has to do with injuries. Was on the disabled list a couple of times last year missed the first 40 games with that surgery Joe talked about last year as well but he's healthy and ready to go for the Cardinals tonight and he'll face Ender in Sayarte leading things off Ender two for seven so far on the year and takes a strike. Baseball still buzzing about that remarkable catch and throw in Ciarte made here in Atlanta the other day. He said one of the best catches he's ever made as a professional player. As that just missed to him outside, two balls and a strike. He didn't like it. Two and two. No 
little chopper hit towards short. And the throw to first low and dropped by Adams. Judd Jerko is the third Cardinal shortstop. And his throw was in the dirt. Adams couldn't pick it up, and the Braves get a first inning break. When the Cardinals lost Johnny Peralta early in spring training, Jerko has moved to shortstop and looked a little rough early on. But after that, he started settling into his spot and playing better. One of the things that hurt him here was that he saw Enciarte practically running out of the batter's box. So he had to hurry his throw and threw it low. And now what? I think Ender might have tweaked something running down the line. See him slow? And as soon as he crossed the bag, he looked into the Braves' dugout and said, Something's amiss. And Enciarte will have to be taken down, and Drew Stubbs will take over at first base. Oh, my goodness. So Drew Stubbs will have a few moments to get loose on a cold night. As Ender Inciarte hurt himself running down the first base line to start the game. And Terry Pendleton was not going to let Drew Stubbs just go to the base and start running. It made him stretch a little. So the Braves have their first base runner, Stubbs at first, Ibar in the batter's box. He showed bunt and took one in the dirt. After Peralta got hurt, and he's going to be out at probably half the season at the least with a, a fractured hand and thumb. There was talk and got pretty serious, we understand, between the Braves and Cardinals about St. Louis's interest in Eric Ibar. And that was early in spring training. One ball, no strikes. The Cardinals, though, were able to get a break in this regard. Mets let Ruben Tejada walk away. And so St. Louis signed Ruben Tejada, and then Joe, he promptly got hurt. Yeah, and Ruben, of course, the guy who suffered the injury on the slide by Chase Utley in the playoffs, was just getting healthy when he strained a quad muscle. So the plan was for Jerko to play second base. But now he's moved over to shortstop where he has played in the big leagues before with the Padres. But clearly Mike Matheny's club trying to defend their Central Division Championship comes to Atlanta less than full strength. And already five errors for the St. Louis defense in their first four games. That is not at all like a Cardinal team. No. Zone is a little high tonight. So keep an eye on that. As Ibar digs in, one ball, two strikes. Even though he's left handed, Jaime Garcia is not real good at holding runners. Does not have one of those definitive left handed moves. Stubbs has a good lead with nobody out. Not going. And defensive swing fouled away again. It's almost like they're trying to see if they can throw one far enough outside that Ibar can't reach it. Yadi Molina behind the plate, certainly still a good catch and throw guy despite his hand injuries the last two years, and he reaches a milestone tonight too, doesn't he? He passes Ted Simmons on the all time Cardinals game cost list. Number one all time is Yadi or Molina. One ball, two strikes. And that's poke foul past third and out of play. Ted Simmons is a member of the Braves organization, he's a special assistant. Saw yep. Ted here a couple of days ago. Yeah, he was here for the first series with the Nationals. He may still be in town. Growing up in St. Louis, Ted Simmons was my favorite player as a kid. Those long, flowing locks. I mean, how could I resist? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. 
He had some Noah Syndergaard look about yes, it. Yes, he did. Ted, of course, played with the Braves too late in his career. Former GM in the big leagues. One ball, two strikes. Just missed inside. Good try by Garcia. Two and two. Boy, Ted could hit both sides of the plate. To short. Jerko bobbles that. Two errors in the inning, and the Braves have two on and nobody out. Well, I don't have to tell you at this pace that he's on a record setting pace. <laughs> yeah. An effort to try to start that too soon. It's funny, the ball finds you, doesn't it? It does. Game? So here's Freddie Freeman two on nobody out for the Braves first baseman Freddie one for seven this year that hit a home run on opening day. His first at bat with a runner in scoring position this year. He golfs the first one toward Holiday and left swirling winds. And that comes in a step or two and makes the grab for out number one. That'll bring up Adonis Garcia. I think it's safe to say, Joe, he's the hottest hitter right now for the club. No question about it. Four for seven with a homer. And he had good luck against St. Louis last year, too. Dubs and Ibar lead from second and first with one out for the Braves third baseman and cleanup man Adonis Garcia. And a chopper toward third. Carpenter has it second for one and on the first to double play. So St. Louis tried to gift wrap an early run with a couple of errors but a fly out and a double play send us to a score of second. to the second inning now you do notice we do have a new starting catcher tonight that is Tyler Flowers and viewers at home you might not be able to tell but he is actually wearing some different equipment and he is the only catcher in the MLB to wear it he actually helped design this equipment now you know there has been a big focus on head injuries and this specific equipment is has a shock suspension system that reduces the impact of balls hitting him in the face or being charged by up to 50 Percent, and they're really hoping that it can catch on and, and be a safety feature going forward. Yeah, we can wow. see it, Kelsey. Look at that. You get a little bit of a spring in there. Nice. Very unique. Hope it works. Great report, Kelsey. 
looks like she found a place out of the wind. Bless her heart. As we head to the second inning with no score. Yadier Molina is the batter. And if there is an indispensable piece to this Cardinal club, Joe, I think this would be the guy for the Cardinals. He is such a big part of their game preparation, handling the pitching staff, controlling the running game, a good hitter, but he may not be 100% yet. Yeah, not one, but two surgeries on his thumb in the offseason to try to clean it up. There's kind of a brace on it now to help him out when he's swinging. Didn't mean to. And Flowers will pounce on that. There's a break for Whistler. A little roller in front of the plate. And Molina's retired for out number one. It's really a cool idea on the catcher's mask for Tyler Flowers. Looks like there might be a spring down at the bottom, too. Sure is. There it is, yeah. Colton Wong, the batter, the Cardinals' second baseman. And he takes a ball. Eleven home runs for Wong, double digits in back to back seasons for him. The last time a Cardinal second baseman did that, Frank Frisch. No kidding. 1927 and 1928. And that good work earned Colton Wong a five year contract extension that he signed this past spring. And he had a good cut there, but is behind one and two. See the wild horse of the Osage? Or was that Pepper Martin? Pepper Martin. So Pepper had two great nicknames. One ball, two strikes. Of course, one of the best Cardinal teams was back in the 1930s, 33, 34, the old Gas House Gang. Dizzy Dean and company, 2 2 pitch. He's in the dirt. And a full count. Judd Jerko waits on deck. Well, let's see what uh, Matt Whistler has in mind here 3 and 2. Stayed with the fastball. To first. It stayed down for Freeman. He stayed with it and wins the race to the bag for the second out. Jerko, two for ten with a homer this year. Cardinals traded John Jay to the Padres. Target, native of West Virginia. And a high towering fly ball to left. Well, Rivera should have more trouble. He doesn't have any trouble, and it's three up, three down for Matt Whistler. And Marcakis leads off when we come back.
Dave's Baseball is sponsored by your local Toyota dealers, Let's Go Places, the Georgia Lottery, and Synovus, the bank of here. Well, if you haven't been by SunTrust Park lately, you might want to make a drive by. I was shocked today when I made my way past the new ballpark just how much progress has been made for the Braves' new home. A year away, I mean, and, and a year ago that was all but just a, a flat piece of dirt. So what they've done in about 13 months' time is remarkable. Freddie, Thank you. awesome. Beg your pardon. Freddie took a tour of the facilities yesterday. So that's an exciting part of this 2016 season as to what lies ahead for the Braves in their new home. Nick Markakis, Hector Oliveira, and Tyler Flowers are calling here in the second. No score, just underway in Atlanta. First look at the St. Louis Cardinals. Ball one. Toward left and near the line. Holiday slowing now into foul ground. He goes and makes the catch. It's that old adage in baseball that games in April count just as much as those in September when you're in a pennant race. And one of the things that I'm sure is in the back of the Cardinals' minds after going 0 3 in Pittsburgh is that with all the talk about the Cubs and how good they are, they can't really afford to let the Cubs or the Pirates jump out to a big lead on them. How big of an impact will the Kyle Schwarber injury have on that central race? Big. It's, it's big on the Cubs. If you didn't hear, as Hector Oliveira bats. Horrible outfield collision in Arizona last night between Kyle Schwarber and Dexter Fowler. Schwarber has torn a couple of ligaments in his knee. He is done for the year for the Cubs. A real shame. They've got some depth there with Soler, who played right field for them a lot last year. I know they're glad they re signed Dexter Fowler after a long negotiation over the wintertime to bring him back. And that's every manager's nightmare. Lose good players to injury. Cardinals had that with Piscotti last year. That Terrible collision in Pittsburgh. As that's taken low by Oliveira. Three balls into strike. Good pitch, full count. See his best fastball so far, 92. Hey, the Padres scored tonight. Finally, yeah. Well, they took out a little frustration in Colorado. They scored 13 times today after going scoreless in their first three games. Oliveira is called out on strikes. That's the second out of the inning, and we hate to show this to you, but it's a real big story in baseball. This was the injury to Kyle Schwarber in Arizona last night. Fleck Fowler kind of saw the saw it coming and ducked under him. And in doing so just took out Schwarber's leg. That is a shame. As Tyler Flowers bats for the first time as a Brave he was a 239 hitter with the White Sox last year. Played 112 games drove in 39 runs. Freddie Gonzalez was asked before the game about his catching situation. Will it be a strict platoon behind the plate? And Freddie was rather matter of a fact. He said, whoever hits is going to play. I like that. And promptly 3 0 with Gordon Beckham waiting on deck. A 
And four straight missed to Flowers. He's the third Braves base runner. First walk for Garcia. And here's Gordon. And if the pattern continues for Freddy Gonzalez with regards to Jace Peterson, you might see a platoon with Gordon Beckham. We've seen that in the middle of games when a left hander's on the mound late in the ball game. Gordon's gotten three pinch hit opportunities for the Braves. A couple of pinch hit opportunities, I should say. Yeah, I'd like to see Gordon have a good night. Made a costly error in game one and has struck out in each of his first three at bats. Put that behind him. Have a good night tonight. No balls, two strikes. No score in the brave second. Ender Inciarte had to leave with an injury running down the first baseline. No word yet on what's ailing him. As soon as we find out, we'll of course pass that along to you. Yeah, it wasn't like he grabbed at his hamstring or anything. He just he just slowed down. Hope it's nothing serious, and I'm glad he was smart enough to let the dugout know so that he didn't run the risk of really messing it up. That's hit hard, but well foul. And Gordon will face another one two pitch. Good crowds expected for this entire series with the Cardinals. If you haven't made your plans, hope you'll join us, but bring a jacket. It's supposed to be chilly the rest of tonight, tomorrow night as well. Beautiful weather expected Sunday. The finale of the season opening homestand. Slow roller left side. Carpenter charges from the infield grass, lobs to first in time, and that retires the side. Garcia leads off for the Cardinals. No score after two. And it's time for our cold hard facts brought to you by clean crisp Coors Light my beer lowest team ERA against any opponent last season Pirates against the Mets had the best but just one percentage point higher was the Braves against the Cardinals a lot of that had to do with the fact the last three games of the year were played here at Turner Field against St. Louis and the Braves shut them out all three games. So if you want to go back St. Louis hadn't scored in six games dating back to that series. 
And they haven't won a regular season game since September, so they are real ornery right now. <laughs> I mean, the best fans in baseball are, shall we say, jumping off the bandwagon. Yes. So called best fans. Yes, exactly. Self proclaimed, some might say. There you go. <laughs> yeah. huh. As Jaime Garcia leads off, he's from Reynosa, Mexico. 22nd round pick by the Cardinals back in 2005. And he looks at ball one high. Ball's really coming out of Matt Whistler's hand nice tonight. I made a comment when we talked with Matt down in spring training in one of our spring telecasts after he pitched he joined us and I, I said at the time there's a different look about him almost as if those last three four starts last season cemented in his head that OK I can do this I can be a successful major league pitcher. My question to you as a former major league hitter is that something you can sense your second time around when you see this guy not necessarily except that you'll see him. You notice that he's more aggressive perhaps than the last time you saw him. That look to me is. I know. What I'm doing and I know how to do it. Is what it kind of looks like to me. Whereas. His first. Ten starts last year it was one of those happy to be here type things sure. and trying not to make mistakes. Now he's not worried about making mistakes. He is letting it fly. So that's something as a hitter you can't really quantify no. other than just his approach toward yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, scattering reports will tell you hey, he's more aggressive. He's in the zone. He's attacking more. And that was one of the keys tonight. Stay aggressive. He's got a couple of strikeouts. That one on a 94 mile an hour fastball. As he got the Cardinal pitcher to start the inning. Here's Carpenter who flied out to center. This guy is a terrific big league hitter. One of his goals was to try to hit 20 home runs last year. Adam Wainwright said, no way, no how. There's no chance you're going to hit 20 home runs. Well, he hit 28 of them. As that one's hit towards center, Drew Stubbs, who checked in, makes the catch for the second out. Wainwright was so confident in his bet that he said to Carpenter, you hit 20 home runs, I'll buy you a golf cart. So Carpenter got to 28 and Adam Wainwright opened up the wallet and got him a custom TCU golf cart. One of the real fancy ones too. There's Adam. He'll pitch Sunday. Talking to him before the game about his Achilles that he tore last year. And he had shorts on and he was talking about how much smaller his left calf is than his right. That's kind of goes with the territory and he goes, but once for power, once for speed. <laughs> uh, no balls, two strikes for Steven Piscotti. I'm a little worried your fan club of the Achilles tendon thing is growing a little bit too big and too fast yeah, huh? way <laughs> way too fast. Adam made a remarkable comeback last year after tearing his in May and pitching in October late September actually. Remarkable. Two and two. For Steven Piscotti, who picked up his first big league RBI against the Braves last July. It was a sack fly, and I believe it was a game that Shelby Miller pitched, and it was a game the Braves lost by a run, if memory serves. He's a big guy, and actually bigger than he might appear standing next to Tyler Flowers, who's 6'5, 260. But he's one of those guys that the ball just jumps off his bat. You know, even on a nice, easy swing, it really seems to travel. Popped up right side. Wind is going to push that toward the stands, and Freddie runs out of real estate. Might be a little hard to see right now, too. I looked at Drew Stubbs, and he was looking at 
Mark is like pointing to the sky like he might have a little trouble seeing here at dusk. And you're right about Piscotti, 6'3, 210. Supplemental first round pick in 2012. Is he out of Cal? Uh, let's I see. He's out of Cal Berkeley. Born in Pleasanton. Let me check the back of the book here. Stanford. Stanford. Yep. Okay. He well, completed his degree in atmosphere and energy engineering. So now we know how his ball travels as far as it does. But you got to make contact. Exactly right. Whistler has his third strikeout in his first three innings, and he'll bat first when we come back. April in the ATL. We are celebrating 30 games in 30 days between the Braves and the Hawks. And joining me is the Hawks' Tim Hardaway Jr. Now, Tim, you guys did already clinch a playoff spot, but we all know the regular season is far from over. Yeah, it's far from over, and uh, we still got uh, a couple more games left for this regular season to end. And uh, you know, it all it all boils down to us, us trying to win out and uh, holding our third place uh, spot. And I know you told me that you didn't play baseball growing up, but if I give you a bat, could you get a base hit off Weisler? Uh, possibly. Uh, I think he's I can throwing. Hit. He's yeah, throwing. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's throwing Whistler's really well. Good. Yeah, he is, and he just got a hit right now. So uh, I'll probably get two out of ten. I probably fear. Uh, probably all the other ones will be balls or strikes. But other than that, <laughs> I mean, it's tough. That ball is coming really, really fast. So I, I really don't know what to expect. <laughs> and real quick, what would your walk-up song be? Uh. I, I mean, I love music, so my favorite artist is Jay-Z. So okay. I think I think any Jay-Z song uh, 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 would be my walk-up song, I guess. Awesome. Well, we have a big game on Saturday versus the Celtics. Yeah. That is on Fox Sports Southeast, so guys, you're not going to want to miss that one. And I think we're going to end this interview with our impression of the Bay's Gaze, because he was here before. So you take you? We go. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Whistler down the line. Nice play in right to save an extra base by Piscotti. And Matt Whistler picks up the first Braves hit with an opposite field single. Nice job there. He only had four hits all last year in 29 at bats, which isn't that all that bad for a pitcher, but he got a fastball up and away and just slapped it down the line. Nice play by Piscotti, as you said, Chip, to save a double or more. So Drew Stubbs gets his first at bat of the game. He took over for Enciarte. By the way, people with the Cardinal organization say they haven't skipped a beat defensively in right field after Jason Hayward left to go to the Cubs. Scotty, a very good outfielder.
So Stubbs pressed into duty tonight. That's with Whistler at first. And takes high. Ball one. This guy can go get him too. Drew Stubbs, a very good center fielder. Can run like crazy. His issues offensively have always dealt with a lot of strikeouts, putting the ball in play more. And it was his speed and his ability to hit right handed that made him a better fit for this club from a strategic standpoint than Michael Bourne. In just this type of situation. And you got a lefty on the mound. Stubbs didn't start tonight, but he fits in well due to the injury to Enciarte. No. To come in and be right handed as a replacement. Flair into right center. That's going to get down for a hit. Look at Whistler go. He got a great jump at the crack of the bat. Never stopped running. And the Braves have him first and third. First hit in the Braves uniform for Drew Stubbs. High breaking ball fought it off. And a great read here by Whistler who saw that it was going to drop. And went for that extra base and watch his slide. Nice pop up. Now you got to get Whistler home here. High bar reached on an error. So far this year, one for ten with runners in scoring position. And Garcia did just what he's good at in the first inning. He was in trouble. He got the double play to erase the two errors made by Jerko in the inning. And a 62% ground ball rate for all of his outs. He'd love one here. Stay out of a big inning. That ball's low. Yeah, I just saw a note on him on Garcia. Since 2010, he's given up the fourth fewest home runs and has recorded the third most double plays. So that tells you there, he's down in the zone, his ball sinks, hard to elevate it. And he could use a double play here even if it costs him a run. Top half of that pitch, two balls and a strike. Ibar in the first inning, when Stubbs came in to pinch run at first, he took a couple of shots to right field, remember, and fouled off a few balls off to the right side. Might be a good place to try to go right here with the runner being held on again. Just missed the inside corner. So what does Ibar look for? Way ahead in the count, three and one. Yeah, just don't try to do too much with it. Again, this guy's keeping the ball down. He wants a ground ball. Think about a, a single to drive in a run as opposed to trying to hit a gapper, even though it's three and one. Stubbs is running, swing and a miss. And Molina concedes the base. It's a steal for Stubbs. The importance there takes the Cardinals out of a double play chance. Already the second stolen base for Stubbs in three games. So Ivar works a full count. Really trying to bury some pitches in on his hands so that he can't hit the ball the other way. And a lot of that comes from Molina.
Infield has shortened up. Everybody but Jerko. To right. Piscotti near the line. Makes the catch. Runner tags, headed home, throw up the line. Close play. Whistler scores standing up. And a terrific throw by Piscotti made that play awfully close. But a sack fly gives Atlanta a third inning lead. Again, Piscotti is an excellent defender and shows off his arm right here, even though he was moving toward the line. A very accurate throw, and why Whistler was not sliding, I'm not sure. That close. So Ibar with an RBI. The Cardinals will play the infield in and have a shift on. And a good piece of base running by Stubbs to also move up and give Freddie a chance to drive him in from third. Freddie took a shot to left his first time up. Swung early in the count, laid off that pitch. As Garcia missed outside. Late on that one. That pitch to Ibar the first time they went away from him after all those pitches in, and he was able to. Loft it to right field and deep enough to get the run in. This can't be a comfortable sequence for the Cardinals infield with Freeman up there. How'd you like to be standing on the infield grass with Freddie up there on the right side of the No, nine? thank you. But Mike Matheny and the Cardinals offense not doing much in the early going. That's a precious second run 90 feet away. Oh, yeah. Nice breaking ball. If you're going to put three guys on the right side of the infield, you must assume that Freddie's going to try to pull anything you throw. And if you're Freeman, I think you got to look middle away. Swung at a high strike, and Freeman is retired for the second out. That's big strikeout for Garcia. The infield can back up, and it's up to Adonis Garcia if the Braves had a tally run number two. When you're coming into home plate, like. Matt Whistler was doing you depend on the guy coming up next to tell you to stand up. Well, Freddie was telling him to stand up and then at the last second threw his hands down. So the fact, the fact that Whistler was standing partially due to the instruction he was getting from Freddie Freeman. Dubs at third for Garcia, who is riding a six game hitting streak dating back to last year. The Cardinals won't pitch to him. They like the lefty lefty opportunity with Nick Marcakis waiting next. So Nick will stride to the plate. He's got an 11 game hitting streak against the Cardinals. He'd like to extend that here in the third. Nick flied out to start the second.
Base hit to right, 2 0. Marquecas spoils the strategy with a clean hit. Stubbs scores, it's 2 0. Under the saying of best laid plans, you still got to make a good pitch. Target away, fastball down the middle. And Nick didn't miss it. Braves were one for eight in the series against the Nationals with runners in scoring position. That's a big two out hit there. So Nick with the RBI, it brings up Oliveira, who took strike three his first time up. Two on, two out, two in for the Braves so far. And the change in for a strike. Heavy workload for Garcia, already 60 pitches. 25 of them have come in this inning. Hector not happy with the call third strike he got called on him his first time up not happy with that last high strike. But that looked like a pretty good pitch to hit at 88. Towards center. Richard comes in still coming slides can't catch it. It's three nothing. Garcia scores. Marquecas all the way around to third. A blue pit. And two straight Atlanta hits after the intentional walk. Big swing, but the ball didn't get anywhere. You saw Grichik pause for just a second. He had a long way to go. The winds blowing across it knocked that ball down. Everything played in the favor of the Braves. But in all honesty, he should have cut that ball, hit him right in the thumb. Tough play, though, sliding, trying to keep your eyes on the baseball without your head bobbing up and down. So the inning continues for Tyler Flowers, who is the first man to walk against Garcia tonight. Three runs on four hits in the frame. Almost started with a hit by the pitcher. That usually leads to trouble. Toward the gap in left center. That'll get down and score a run. It's four to nothing. Tyler Flowers with a rocket brings home Marcakis. And Oliveira around a third. The Braves are first and thirding the Cardinals to death. And a ton of two out knocks to drive in runs. That looked like an off speed pitch, maybe a change up. But it was right in the center of the plate again, and Tyler able to stay back enough to drive it. So everybody having some fun at the plate right now. It's four zip. And Gordon Beckham, the batter. Hey, it's a rocket. Oh, great play by Jerko, and the flip to second will retire the side. 
Nine come to the plate. Four score on five hits. Big production with two outs for Atlanta in the third inning. We go to the fourth. Good start to the series in Atlanta tonight. They score four times, lead after three, four nothing. Time for our Toyota key play tonight. Well, that guy that's bucket for a leadoff spot in the batting order, Matt Whistler got it all started. Drew Stubbs sent him to third, and then the hit parade was on. Sacrifice fly by Ibar. Garcia drew an intentional walk, and then three straight hits got some more guys in. We haven't seen Tom Glavin yet. You know what he'd be saying right now, right? He's an athlete, you know. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, he would. So Matt's done his damage at the plate. He's doing good work on the mound. Braves have held the Cardinals scoreless over their last 34 innings head to head. And in the fourth, it'll be Holiday, Adams, and Gritchick, the heart of the St. Louis order. That slicing toward the seats foul. Steve right one for Matt Holiday. Holiday looks a little trimmer, doesn't he? Yeah. He's getting a little long in the tooth, too, but what a hitter. Big strong guy. You know what? He's he's maybe the the guy that will have folks stop putting the asterisk next to the names of players who played for the Rockies. Yes, he put up great numbers at Coors Field. Most good hitters will do that. But he's hit just about everywhere he's gone and certainly has continued to hit for the St. Louis Cardinals. 6'4, 240 out of Stillwater, Oklahoma. His brother, the baseball coach at Oklahoma State now. He'll go over the 2000 hit mark this year. He's it came in 1901. He had a great start to his year last year. Remember, he got on base 45 consecutive games mm -hmm. to start the year. Then he had leg trouble. That's headed for left center. Stubbs on the run, not going to get that. That'll bounce up against the fence. And Matt Holiday has a pair of doubles tonight. This one leads off the top of the fourth. One to the gap in right center. One to the gap in left center. Slider that had a little bit of the plate, but he watch him go out and around this pitch and drive it. That shows you how strong he is and what bat speed he's got. Tough, tough out. Adams was hit on the right toe by a pitched ball in the first inning. 
again the Braves have a shift on for the hulking Cardinal first baseman and he hits it toward left Oliveira broke back now has to scramble in still coming can't get there holiday broke late toward third he'll make it standing up and it's a blue pit for Adams and the Cardinals threaten now with first and third nobody out. I thought when Adams hit this ball I thought wow of all the times for him to hit the ball to left field the Cardinals would love to see him use the whole field but not here not an effort to try to get the runner over. But it dropped. Here's Grichuk struck out swinging his first time up. If you want to paint a picture as to why the Cardinals are having trouble scoring runs in the early going this season, one number jumps out at you immediately. With that hit by Adams, the Cardinals are now four for 26 this year with a runner in scoring position. And sure enough, they get a hit and he doesn't and score. Doesn't get a run. Right. Cardinals scored seven runs against the Pirates. Check swing. That is a fair ball. Flowers to first. Out number one. So that advances Adams. But Grichik was hoping for a lot more than that. And Molina is the hitter with runners in second and third. We'll see how this plays out with Molina and Wong, but that means that may work out to their benefit. They may not have a big inning where they get all four runs back, but it works the same as a bunt here and gives them a chance to get a couple back with a base hit. Cardinals might be checking to see if that ball was in foul territory. And apparently their review folks say the proper call was made. Or it might have it, they may have thought from their angle it may have hit Gretchen trying to leave the box which would have been a foul ball too. So Molina bats he was out on a almost identical play to what we just saw with Gritchick his first time. Buzz the tower inside one ball no strikes. I think Matt would take two ground balls here and get out of the inning and lead four to one. Oh, Took a shot at right and fouled it away one ball one strike. Cardinals were still very concerned about the thumb of Yadier Molina so much so that they brought in Brian Pena the former Brave to serve as Molina's backup and wouldn't you know it Brian Pena got hurt. He had a loose body in his knee that required surgery so he's lost for the first weeks of the season. So Molina is going to playing a lot until Pena can come back and help him out. Downstairs, two balls and a strike. Well, I'm trying to look at Yachty's hands to see if he's got that brace on. I don't see it. If it's a brace, maybe it's something inside his batting glove. I mean, that's a it's a big sweatband. Maybe it's covering up some of it. to second there's one of those ground balls the Braves will give up the run for the out scoring from third is holiday give Molina his first RBI Adams to third two outs it's now a 4 1 game. <laughs> Snaps a scoreless streak. The Braves had on the Cardinals 34 and a third innings. So Molina earns an RBI. 
Wong will try to provide a two out hit. He bounced out to Freddie Freeman back in the second inning. And the native of Hawaii takes a ball, one ball, no strikes. That one gets away from Flowers, streaking home and scoring is Adams. Whistler didn't want that, obviously. A wild pitch. And that cuts the lead in half. It's four to two. Hate those freebies. Breaking ball. Tyler went down, did everything he could to get in front of it, try to block it, but the spin on the baseball took it to Tyler's left. So the Braves score four. The Cardinals come right back with a pair. It's now a 4 2 game. And after long walks, the tying run comes to the plate in Judd Jerko, and he's got home run power. So things a little dicey now for Matt with two outs. Well, that was just pure anger. Pure anger on the last couple of pitches to Wong. Aggravated about his wild pitch. All his mechanics went right out the window just trying to air out a couple of pitches. Jericho had a 23 homer season for the Padres in 2013. Last year hit 16 for them. But remember, he was playing very poorly in the first two months of the season, was sent down to AAA to El Paso to get things straightened out, returned and rallied to hit 247 for the Padres. There were some that said that he showed up in the Padre camp last year thinking, thinking that uh, he had this game all figured out, that he didn't have to work as hard, he didn't have to worry about his job or anything else. And as this game is apt to do it'll jump up and bite you when you start thinking that way especially when you've only been in the big leagues for a year. No balls at a strike. Long a good lead at first. And Jerko didn't get that pitch. That was nasty. 0 and 2 your count. Well, the Padres thought very highly of Judd Jerko. They gave him a long term contract extension very early in his career. In fact, he signed through 2019 with a team option for the 2020 season. Flowers knocked that down. One of the other things that may have contributed to his feelings that he had it made. Pitches piling up for Whistler in a long fourth. Number 59 of the night. Little flare on a broken bat's going to turn to gold for Judd Jerko. The Cardinals have him first and third now. And the inning will continue with Jaime Garcia coming up. Cardinals trying to get a little payback for the bottom half of the third. Golly, that ball was six inches off the plate. Somehow able to reach it. And Roger McDowell is going to pop out. Roger, you may not know, in his offseason, was working with Hussein Bolt on his foot speed. <laughs> Roger now one of the fastest pitching coaches in Major League Baseball. You only have 30 seconds to leave the dugout and make your point to your pitcher. I wondered what that was all about when I got to 
uh, champion stadium in Orlando and he was like coming out of the dugout in the blocks. I didn't understand that. Yeah and the parachute mm -hmm. that they had you know to, to give him some wind resistance. I mean he's he's done an incredible job this offseason. I mean he is. It used to be that. When he ran out there he looked like he had a parachute on but not anymore. Got to hustle out there and all that hard work this spring has really paid off. So here's Garcia the Cardinal pitcher will try to help himself. First and third St. Louis with two across in the inning. Garcia, pretty good cut. Whistler has a hit and a run scored. Matt hopes to prevent Garcia from evening that score. Time is a career 143 hitter. All kinds of left shoulder problems for Jaime Garcia and then most recently the thoracic outlet surgery. I think that's the same surgery Fulton Evich had for the Braves. I think they're very similar. Take the rib out and mm -hmm. help the circulation and the like. That was in 2014 for Garcia. Who will turn 30 in early July. Don't want to lose the pitcher with two outs. Ground ball up the middle. Diving stop. And late throw to first. And Garcia has an RBI hit. Beckham had a long way to go and couldn't get enough on the throw to get his man at first. Wong scores after the walk. It's a one run game. You can see how Gordon's over there trying to plug up the hole on the right side. The only chance he really had was if somehow Jerko didn't hustle to the bag at second. Maybe get a force there. Now you've got big trouble. Here's Carpenter. Cardinal leadoff man is flying to center twice. Was late on a good live fastball, strike one. Carpenter, a real find for the Cardinals, a 13th round pick. Two time All Star in 2013 and 14. And he golfs this one toward right center field. Stubbs is there. He's got it, and that retires the side. The Cardinals pinged their way to three runs in the fourth inning. We've got a one run game now.
Cardinals score three in the fourth. We've got a one run game and now it's time for our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard when you talk about a franchise that has been a model of consistency the St. Louis Cardinals are at the top of the heap. Look at how many playoff games the Redbirds have been involved in. Yeah full eight over the Yankees and when you think about that with the Yankees and their World Series trips in the early 2000s that's very impressive for St. Louis but they've got such a great organization and always have had they do a lot of good things developing their own players drafting and developing their own players and that continues today. I think Mike Matheny has done a fantastic job for a guy who had never managed to come in and take over a very good ball club. Granted, it was very talented when he got here, but to be able to continue that success of getting to the postseason, I think he's done a great job. Think about who you follow, too. Right. It, the old saying, don't be the guy that follows the legend, follow the guy that follows the legend. Well, Mike Matheny followed Tony LaRusso. And took the Cardinals to the playoffs in his first four seasons at the helm of the St. Louis franchise. As Matt Whistler leads off the Braves fourth inning one run game 4 three score. And to your point about the Cardinals. They and the Braves have so many similarities their player development profile. The long history in the National League. Lots of postseason success. Pitching and, players, defense. pitching and defense. Cardinals have averaged over the last eight years, averaged 91 wins a year. As that one served up the middle, Wong, a nice play, got his man for out number one. Well, I said that Matheny inherited a good team and he didn't. But sometimes a guy who comes in new, and I mean, raw in a way in terms of managerial experience it's hard not to mess it up yeah you you, you want to show everybody watch me manage watch let me show you what I know and how I can do it to his credit he stayed out of the way he, you know kept the team together handled the pitching staff really well but pretty much stayed out of their way I wonder if that was hard for Mike too because he was such a terrific player for a long time and a lot of the guys he's managing against and maybe even guys like Matt Holiday either played with or played against. I wonder if that's a difficult transition for a guy like him to make to step into a dugout not having managed before but still a very respected player. I think it has to do with his personality. You know, he's he's like that guy Molina uh, uh, perhaps not as vocal at times in the dugout as Yachty can be but one of those guys that everybody respected and knew that he knew how to play the game right. And how to play the game the Cardinal way, and that went a long way. Drew Stubbs took strike three. Stubbs came in, by the way, in the first inning when Ender Inciarte reached on an air, but had to leave with what's been described as left hamstring tightness. Inciarte's status is day to day, but it was the left hamstring on this chilly night that knocked Ender out. Two up two down Garcia trying to restore some order he's got three strikeouts and here's Ibar 0 for one with an RBI on a sack fly Jerko at short rough game defensively for Jerko but no trouble there it's a seven pitch inning and we're off to the fifth.
It's 4-3, Atlanta over the Cardinals in game one. All year long, our friends at Delta Airlines get us from city to city. Can't wait to see Mac Honey on Sunday for our first road trip of the year that will take us to Washington and then down to sunny Miami for a weekend date with the Marlins. Matt Whistler back to work with Piscotti up there, and that's popped out of play foul. Braves scored four in the third. St. Louis came back with three in the fourth. And the two, three, four batters are up for the Redbirds. Two balls, two strikes. After this series in Atlanta, the Cardinals will go home for a long home stand. Their home opener is Monday afternoon. They'll host Milwaukee. And they'll have a special treat in St. Louis. One of their all time greats, Lou Brock, is going to throw out the ceremonial first pitch at Bush Stadium. Flied toward right. Marquez drifts back. Wind is pushing that ball to the warning track and a step or two on it. Piscotti gave it a ride, but he's out number one. Might have been a home run in St. Louis. Game two of our series in Atlanta tomorrow night. Coverage starts at 6.30 Eastern on Fox Sports South, home of the Braves, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. It's April in the ATL, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Special treat tomorrow night, Tim Hudson will make his broadcasting debut with us for game two of the set. Speaking of inexperienced managers. <laughs> Tim's got a busy 24 hours, doesn't he? Yeah, managing his son Cade's team over in Auburn. And I don't know. And then they got a day game tomorrow, a day game following a night game. That's pretty tough. I think their team is called the A's. So that's fitting. That's where Tim started his career. Just wonder if he has the respect of those young players, you know, with very little or no managerial experience. Well, you, you never want to manage kids that you act younger than and that have more hair. <laughs> that's the big problem for Tim. <laughs> but we're told he's off to a 2 0 start in his managerial career. So I, again, the good ones just stay out of the way. Right? Yeah. Make out the lineup. That's driven foul by Holiday, so look forward to seeing Tim. Yeah. And we'll have a good matchup tomorrow night. Julio Tehran, Carlos Martinez, the two flamethrowers who will get after it for their respective clubs. And Sunday, Williams Perez and Adam Wainwright. Then we hit the road. Holiday couldn't stop his swing and he will be thrown out by Flowers. Holiday's perfect night is over. He's two for three as Whistler struck him out on a check swing. And here's Adams. Adams another draft find for the Cardinals. Everybody knows about the first round picks the second round picks but this guy's a 23rd round pick 699th player selected in 2009. You know what Chip that brings me that brings up a good point with the absence of power kind of throughout baseball yeah. especially in the minor leagues you don't hear about too many guys that can really. Uh, hit the ball out of the ballpark. There might be a premium on guys like this now that used to be 25th, 30th round draft picks that people thought, well, he's one dimensional. Well, with the absence of power, those guys might move up the draft charts because of need. I know John Hart said at the luncheon the other day if there's one area that the Braves could 
improve on in their position players in the minor leagues, it would be to add a few players who have some pop. Adams checked his swing. Flowers throws it over the mountain to first, and that'll retire the side. That's five strikeouts for Matt Whistler. Uncle Rico, you got it, baby. 4 3 score. Well, we count down our final games here at Turner Field, and tonight's honoree is the great Walter Banks, who has had himself quite a week. Opening day in Atlanta last night, Joe, he threw out the ceremonial first pitch in Rome for the Rome Braves, That's and he threw a strike. I'll bet he did. What a great honor that is to start the Rome season. We've said it before if there is a better ambassador for the Atlanta Braves than Walter Banks I'd like to meet him. So nicely done. As 78 remain at home after tonight. Freddie Freeman starts things off for the Braves in the fifth. Freddie is 0 for 2. Third time through the lineup now for Garcia. Steve right one. Freddie's had some good luck against Garcia in his career four for seven with two homers coming in but he's been a little late on the fastball. <laughs> Walter weren't running the camera for us down there. Way to go, Walter. And taking over for Jerry Krause. That'll be the first time that camera's ever been in focus. One ball, two strikes. Shift on for Freeman. And a swing and a miss. Freddie's down on strikes for the second time tonight. Garcia has four of them. And let's see what kind of focus. Walter's got working. Good job, Walter. Doing a little panning. Uh, he's got a good coach down there, that's for sure. Here's our third all Garcia matchup between pitcher and batter. Donis is hit into a double play. He's walked and scored. In fact, he was intentionally walked to set up a lefty lefty matchup with Nick Markakis. Nick drove home a run, and that started a, a big inning. He scored four times back in the third. And fouled out of play. Let's take a look at our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. Joe mentioned Adonis had good luck against the Cardinals. Five games, three homers, four driven in. First big league homer against these guys last July. 
Good pitch. Oh, the outside corner. Ball four. Garcia walks for a second time. He's aboard in front of Nick Markakis. Three walks to go with four strikeouts. So Nick Markakis extended his batting streak against the Cardinals. It's now 12 games in a row. And Nick picked up an RBI as well. Garcia normally has very good control. Not so tonight. Fly to left. Avila was there for out number two. Adonis back to first. Garcia didn't walk a man in seven of his 20 starts last year. Each one of those games was six innings or more. Hey, what? Walter's got that figured out already. I have to start calling Jerry Wally Pip. Uh huh. If I'm not careful. Olivera takes a breaking strike. Well, we already know that Walter'd be a pretty good broadcaster, especially on trivia night. Just yeah. Throw out a number, he's got mm -hmm. an answer for you. Most important tonight is one. Both the Braves and Cardinals looking for their first victory of the season. Braves are winning four to three. Two balls at a strike. Haven't gone 0 and 4 since 1997. Yeah, on that year they started 0 and 6. Two one. Big long swing and Oliveira didn't get it. down Broadway and Olivero took it and that retires the side. We are through five. Good ball game. Four three Atlanta leads it and away Walter.
think it's time for tonight's SunTrust moments that matter on this date 42 years ago. Henry Aaron right, became right, baseball's right, all-time home run king. Long home deep, run off Al deep. Downing. Tom House caught it in the Braves bullpen. And a record that many thought would never be broken was by Henry Aaron and that man in the white coat, Craig Sager, who we hope is doing well tonight. Joe, I'm sure you remember that moment well as a younger player in your. I was a Dodger farmhand at that time. Baseball and actually, I was watching the game in Vero Beach. We hadn't broke camp yet. So what did that home run mean to players of your generation? Much less everybody who loved Babe Ruth and baseball. As as sad as it is, I think it was like an awakening of how great Henry Aaron was. After all those years of great seasons and everything, it was like, holy smokes, this guy really is going to break Babe Ruth's record, and he didn't. And it was finally like a uh, a torch that was lit for a lot of people who didn't know enough about Henry Aaron or appreciate his long career of success. By the time Henry Aaron retired after 23 years, at the end of the 1976 season, he held more major league batting records than any other player in the history of the game. Most RBIs, most extra base hits, total bases. And Aaron second all time in at bats, second in multi hit games, fourth in runs. And of course, that big home run that at 907 changed the baseball world forever. Dusty Baker was the man in the on deck circle. And then in 1970, one of Henry Aaron's other great firsts, first player with 3,000 hits and over 500 homers. As Molina grounds to second, flips the bat away in anger. Whistler protecting a one run lead, two outs quickly in the sixth. And snaps Richard a streak out. Snaps a streak of three straight strikeouts. Really good pitch to Gritchick to strike him out. And uh, back to your mention of Craig Sager in that shot out on the field when Henry was stepping at home plate. I want to. Echo that. Send our best to Craig. Hope he's feeling well. Wish him, not, wish him nothing but the best. You know how Henry Aaron began his major league career? First, the pitch to Colton Wong. I think it was a shortstop. Second baseman. Second baseman. Yeah. Remember Bobby Thompson? Uh huh. Spring training injury took Bobby Thompson out of the Braves lineup and Henry Aaron began his major league career. Wow. His first home run off Vic Rashi, April 23rd, 1954. 715 homers in 20 years. Think about that. Nice play, Beckham. Throw to first in the stretch by Freeman. Colton Wong robbed in the sixth inning. Matt Whistler getting some defensive help and eight pitch hitting. Braves try to extend their lead.
Braves can get some insurance. They're up a run, 4 3 in the sixth. Bottom part of the order coming up. Tyler Flowers, Gordon Beckham, who just made a fine play. And then Matt Whistler. Tyler making his Braves debut has walked and singled home a run. And he shoots this one toward right. Piscotti is there and he makes the play for the first out. Tyler's got a great sense of humor at the Braves leadoff luncheon. He was asked about beginning his career in the Braves system. And of course, Tyler was traded to the White Sox for Javier Vasquez, and Tyler said, Yep, that killed that dream. Yeah. <laughs> Very dead pan. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, great to have him back. And he and this man in the batter's box thrilled to be playing at home. It's Gordon Beckham. He's made a super play. Yeah, he talked about this being his team. Growing up as a kid and coming to Turner Field, ask about his favorite player, and he said, well, I was chipper, wore my Socks like he did. Wanted to do everything like him. Pop toward left. Long run holiday. Still chugging. Wind played tricks with it and he made the catch. The leaner, meaner Matt Holiday caught up with that for the second out. Make sure you join us after our game on Braves Live. We'll recap all of tonight's action. We'll check in with Freddie Gonzalez and head to the clubhouse to hear from the players. Braves Live after the game presented by Xfinity. Our pal Matt Diaz in the hot seat tonight with Jerome Jurinovich. So we hope you'll stay tuned as we hope to talk about the first Braves win of the season tonight. That was pretty funny. Usually you'll see some infielders like do a little stall thing to let their pitcher catch his breath so he can get back to the mound. Yadi Molina stood out in front of home plate waiting for a man all day. <laughs> I'm sure that was appreciated, right? Yeah. It's hard to believe Matt Holiday's 36 years old. And he has had a terrific career. And you wouldn't know it looking at him now, of course, but was a terrific high school quarterback. Really? And was going to go to Oklahoma State before the Rockies signed him. So as an Oklahoma Sooner, you're saying he made the right decision, right? Yes, he did. Was Matt Holiday 6'4", 240 as a quarterback? I don't think so. And Whistler chased a high pitch. And both he and Garcia are having an easy time of it in the middle inning. Seven pitches ends the Atlanta sixth.
And it is time now for your Yellowwood brand bringing the lumber. Now, obviously, the future is a huge focus here with a loaded Braves farm system, and they opened up their seasons last night. Shasin in Triple A through seven and two thirds shutout innings with seven Ks, and Malik Smith looked incredible at the plate. And then down in Double A, Lucas Smith had nine Ks and only one run in five innings over in Rome. Sirocco had a great outing as well, and Austin Riley good at the dish. And then, of course, there's Dan. Ansby Swanson, two for four with a double and an RBI. Guys? Braves are excited about all of those players on that screen, and the man that might have the most immediate impact is Ulysses Chassin. He's probably going to be pitching for the Braves Tuesday up in Washington. That's the first time Atlanta will need a fifth starter in 2016. I would say that was a nice tune-up then. Seven and two-thirds of shutout baseball. Dansby Swanson, by the way, uh, I can't imagine that he's going to be an A ball long. He's not an A ball player. Hey, well, pop first base side. Freddie Freeman handles Jed Jerko's pop up. There's the first out. However, he uh, will be playing shortstop there every day until he's moved up. Again, I don't think that'll take too long. Austin Riley at Rome, a good start for him. He's one of the guys in the minor leagues that does have some pop. He'll hit some home runs there. And Rome won last night 10 to 1. Night is over for Jaime Garcia. Jeremy Hazelbaker is going to pinch hit. And takes a little low. Interesting that uh, coincidentally, Hazelbaker is a big fan, Braves fan. Over in Tuscaloosa. And that ball is crushed toward right and deep. Marcakis on the run. It is gone. A pinch hit home run for Jeremy Hazelbaker. The pride of Muncie, Indiana, launched one. Eight years in the minor leagues. He's already got two homers since he got called up after the injury to fan. That's eight years of joy and pride right there. Fastball. So new life. 4-4 and a base hit by Matt Carpenter into right. Marquez is over quickly. Carpenter's going to try for two. Here's the throw. It is in time. Marquez guns out Carpenter. And the Cardinals are probably going to take a look at this play at second base. Plants, throws, puts it on the money. Looked like the hand got through the legs of Ibar, but I don't know if it got to the base. It didn't. It was still, he was still kind of groping for it. You know, we've talked a lot about Nick Marcakis and his ability to finally have an offseason workout regimen and how that relates to his work offensively. We've hardly talked at all about how that workout helps him defensively. That was a very strong throw and Ibar and Carpenter met at the bag. Did the left hand sneak in between the legs and touch the base before the tag is the question. Cardinals are challenging the call at second right. There. His left hand comes off. I don't know if his right hand followed. One angle from third base looks like he was safe by a mile. That angle there. Another look. Left hand definitely goes around the bag, and his right hand hit the leg of Eric Ibar. So, this replay rule, the same as last year, is there enough? Clear and convincing evidence to overturn the call, which, as you saw by Mark Wegner, 
was that Carpenter was out at second base. This is quite obviously in a tie game a very big call. Carpenter has a single but he's thrown out nine to six. And the call stands. And now Freddy Gonzalez is making his way to the mound. Perhaps that's the end of the line for Matt Whistler at 91 pitches. That is the case. So Hazel Baker hits a game tying homer Carpenter singles and is thrown out at second Four four your score as the Braves go to the bullpen. Braves baseball is sponsored by the works turbine blower the fastest way to clean up your yard it's work season Cardinals have tied it up on a pinch hit home run here in the top of the seventh inning and friends the skip and Pete bobblehead Toby Mack in concert bark in the park are just a few of the great giveaways and events planned this year as part of the season long celebration of our final season at Turner Field check a full calendar of Braves events at Braves.com slash promotions and get your tickets today. Daniel Winkler is on to pitch for the second time this year. And I don't know if he could pitch any better than he did his first time out struck out the side on 11 pitches. First outing of the year and that was on the heels of some outstanding work in spring training. Winkler struck out 17 and didn't walk a man this spring. That covered 11 innings and that's off the plate to Piscotti one ball one strike. The crime of this is that when you look at the line for Matt Whistler it's not going to reflect at all how well he pitched tonight. He'll walk away with a no decision, but he certainly pitched well enough to win and his line a lot uglier than the way he pitched. Base is empty for Piscotti, who looks outside, ball three. Holiday waits next. He's been a hot hitter tonight for the Cardinals. Yeah, I'd like to see him lead off in the eighth. Just like that Winkler walks his first man of the season including spring training and he'll have to face holiday with a man aboard and two outs. The Cardinals for their early season struggles in different aspects of the game one area that is very solid is their bullpen. And when you look at the Atlanta line tonight all four runs 
all four all five hits in one inning. Cardinals tried to give him a run in the first but the Braves couldn't cash in two errors by Judd Jerko. And since that third inning. The Braves have struck out four times and have only a base on balls. Offensively they will though have the top of the order after the stretch. Ground ball towards short. Eye bar, backhand stab, jump throw to second, and in time, Beckham with the stretch just did beat Piscotti to the bag. And that sends us to the seventh inning stretch. The Cardinals tie it on a pinch hit homer by Jeremy Hazelbaker. 4 4 game. Presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. 4 4 game, bottom of the seventh inning at Turner Field tonight. Braves fans, we invite you to become an A list member today and get multiple ticket options and exclusive benefits for your unique needs. Call now to get the best seats for the final year at Turner Field and the first season at SunTrust Park. Don't miss out on being an A list member today. Go to Braves.com slash A list or call 404. 577-9100. So we do find ourselves in the Cardinal bullpen, and soon Juan O is on to pitch. A big star in the Korean and Japanese baseball leagues. 5'10, 205. 35 years old, 33 years old, beg your pardon. Fastball, slider, split finger pitch. Four seasons of 40 or more saves in the Far East. Seven time All Star in the Korean League. Five time saves leader in the Korean League. Led the Japanese Central League in saves the last two years. And has a great nickname. They call him the final boss and the stone Buddha. <laughs> one ball, one strike. And he's had Tommy John surgery. It cost him a couple of years over in Korea. Your Stubbs didn't get it. One ball, two strikes. Just joining us, Ender and Ciarte started the game, reached first on an error in the bottom of the first inning, left with left hamstring tightness. So Stubbs has been on since. Drew's one for two tonight. A single, a steal, and a run scored to go along with a strikeout. This guy's got some solid legs on him, and he drops and drives. He's not tall, but he's awfully strong. Short arm action. Might be very tough to pick up. Looks like he has a little 
hesitation with his leg kick too as he gets ready to deliver the baseball. A very popular item among Japanese and Korean pitchers. Pop fly foul by Stubbs and into the seats. Good crowd here tonight. Chilly night. Good ball game. Our first Friday night fireworks extravaganza of the season. Fastball in the low 90s. And he just walked a fast man to lead off the seventh. There's the start. Stubbs aboard for a second time tonight. Jaime Garcia started, worked six innings, six strikeouts, three walks. One bad inning in the third. As Joe mentioned, that's where the Braves tallied all four of their runs and all five of their hits. Good bunner at the plate if Freddie wants to try to move the potential go ahead run into scoring position. Here's where the value of a guy like Yadier Molina is so big. He can single handedly shut down a running game, even with a guy as fast as Stubbs at first. Yeah, it looked like Drew was leaning a little bit there. Ibar 0 for 2 with a sack fly RBI tonight. Chalk for his fingers so O can see the signs better. Whoa, we'll have a lot of lights in the outfield at SunTrust Park. Can't wait. They will be aesthetically pleasing. LED lights, too, by the way. Really? Yeah. They were the first, the Braves in SunTrust Park were the first to incorporate that and you and decide to use them. The Mariners have since that time put them in their ballpark at Safeco Field, so they're in operation. Oh, cool. Neat thing about that is if you do have a little power problem or something, they come right back on. You don't have to wait for them to cool off and warm up. Oh, trying to take a little starch out of Stubbs' legs. Which means, like if somebody hits a homer, yeah. Somebody could just go over to the switch and start flicking them on and off real fast. Oh, great. You know, like a strobe light, light show. Directors are going to love that for all the TV crews, <laughs> all the cameras. Uh -huh. That's going to mess them up. That'll be fun. I'm sure they all work just on one switch, too. <laughs> right. Eye bar in the box. Stubbs another half step on his lead. Not going. And the pitch is high. One ball, no strikes. Mike Matheny, a former catcher, a former Gold Glove Award winner himself. Ole's last appearance was against the Pirates, of course. Pitched a perfect inning, struck out the side. He's walked Stubbs here in the seventh. There's the butt, and it's a beauty. Carpenter has to hustle and got his man by a step at first. What a play. That was a beautiful bunt. I know Carpenter was cheating in on him, expecting a bunt, but Ibar didn't that perfectly. You can see right near the cutout and got his man at first. So the sacrifice works, but Carpenter kept it from being a base hit. Nice pick by Adams, too. So let's see if Cardinals give Freddie Freeman much to hit. Freddie's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. You've got Adonis Garcia, a right handed batter, waiting on deck. Freeman, of course, the lefty. Stubbs can fly. He's the man at second, representing the go ahead run.
That pops away from Molina and Stubbs will take third. A wild pitch. It may have been a split finger pitch to start Freddie. Yep. And a, a rare occasion where Molina can't keep it in front of him. And now they're not going to waste any time. They'll go ahead and walk Freddie and set up a potential double play. Right thing to do defensively. You already have one out from the sacrifice. So you got to hope then for a double play ball. To get out of the inning. So first and third with one out. Kevin Segrist is a left-hander for the Cardinals. He's begun to loosen up. He may be getting ready for Marquecas, who waits on deck. Let's see if Adonis can put it in play and drive home Stubbs for the lead. Ball one inside, almost hit him. It's all right if you're Adonis. You just want to make him get something up a little bit. Try not to chase that split finger pitch down in the dirt where you might top it and hit a ground ball. Something you can elevate and drive to the outfield. And you're probably going to see another one of those. And you've got a count where you can guess if you want and look for a breaking ball if you think you can hit it. It was the same pitch, but wasted it away. Holiday, Grichik, and Piscotti left to right in the Cardinal outfield. Wind blowing left to right as Garcia chased and didn't get it. Two and two. That was almost like Adonis did look for it and decided to swing before the ball was ever even cut loose. And he went around. So O gets Garcia to chase a couple of bad balls and strikes him out. That's the second out of the inning and now Marcakis is going to have to face a real tough Cardinal left hander in Kevin Segrist. Big out for O. Two on, two outs now. Home seventh continues.
time now for our Xfinity Game Break Padres at Rockies from Coors Field. This is Ro rookie's rookie. Trevor Story continues his historic start with two more home runs for the Rockies tonight. He becomes the first player ever to hit six home runs through his team's first four season games. And get this, he does that in just his first four career games. But the Padres bats finally wake up erupting for 18 hits as they defeat the Rockies 13 to 6. Thank you, Kelsey. Troy Tulowitzki, who? Yeah. As Kevin Segris loosens up for the Cardinals, this guy was awfully good for St. Louis. Very good in his last outing against the Pirates. A 41st round pick. Out of Buffalo, New York was where he was born. Grew up in Florida, went to Palm Beach College. Throws in the mid to high 90s, and he is mighty tough on lefties. Last year, 90 strikeouts in 74 innings and led the major leagues in appearances with 81. That 90 strikeouts, a record for a left handed Cardinal reliever. He's seen Nick Marcakis before. Nick's one for two against him. And the Braves right fielder bats with two on, two out, and a tie game in the bottom of the seventh. Nick an RBI single that was back in the third Braves looking for their first hit since the third inning. Sharply hit towards second Wong flips to Jerko who handles the high relay and steps on the bag to retire the side. We head to the eighth Adams Richard and Molina coming up in a 4 4 game. It's in Atlanta tonight as we go to the eighth inning. 4 4 is your score. All year long, we'll celebrate the top moments in the history of Turner Field. Tonight, it's Jeff Francoeur's turn, his Major League debut July 7th against the Cubs. How about that? It's a pretty good way to break in, wasn't it? Ryan Langer hands, Brian McCann, Jeff Francoeur. All part of those baby Braves who had such a huge impact that season for Atlanta. As we welcome Eric O'Flaherty into the ball game. Eric picked up a tough luck loss the other night. Opening day. It was an unearned run that he allowed after the error by Beckham in the 10th inning. Uh, let means Diaz is going to bat for Adams here. Diaz, a native of Cuba, leads things off. And O'Flaherty missed low, ball one.
He has a 265 this spring. Cardinals signed him to a four year eight million dollar contract and he unloads down the left field line deep and gone. Diaz hits a home run and the Cardinals lead five to four. Boy is Mike Matheny pushed all the right buttons tonight. Two rookie pinch hitters, but quote unquote rookies, two guys who've been playing a long time, turned on the heater. No doubter. So Eric O'Flaherty throws one pitch. Diaz hits a long home run to put the Cardinals in front, and Jim Johnson's on for Atlanta. Baseball is sponsored by Georgia Power and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. Well, a couple of youngsters have done serious damage for the Cardinals. Hazel Baker with a homer, a Ledmes Diaz, his first big league blast, has brought the Cardinals all the way back from a 4 0 deficit. Again, the Braves don't have a hit since the third inning. And the Cardinals have chipped away with solo shots in the seventh and here in the eighth. And Jim Johnson's on to pitch. And Bogrichuk with a fly ball to right. Nick Marquez handles that for the first out. Jim's been in one game already, two thirds of an inning with a strikeout. He has got a start in Pittsburgh, went one for three in the game he started. So that was his fourth at bat in the big leagues and a good one. Yadier Molina he is 0 for three with an RBI. And he got jammed. High ball. Low throw to first, but Freeman digs it out. Two down. When it's playing Norfolk tonight and just took a lead, Tyler Moore is at a two run homer for the Gwinnett Braves. Remember, he was a man Atlanta picked up late in spring training. But an unforgettable night for. That young man, let me is Diaz, his first big league homer has given St. Louis a late lead. And here's Colton Wong. Wong 0 for 2. He's walked and scored. And Johnson missed low, one ball, no strikes. Mets won their home opener tonight. They beat the Phillies 7 2. San Diego took out some frustration in Colorado. They won 13 6, but. 
young Mr. Story for the Rockies as Kelsey told us a moment ago has hit two more homers for the Rockies tonight. Reds are beating the Pirates 5 2 that one late Milwaukee 4 nothing over Houston. Cubs are in Arizona just underway and the Dodgers and Giants continue their great rivalry at AT&T Park. Ross Stripling will make his big league debut for the Dodgers. Matt Cain will pitch for the Giants. Up the middle, a base hit for Colton Wong. Ninth hit of the night for the Cardinals. Four of their nine hits came in their three run fourth inning. But as you said, the Braves have not had a hit since the third inning. All five of their hits were that inning, and three of them came with two out. Got him leaning. Good pickoff move takes care of Colton Wong. There may be an appeal on this one. This one might be. Yeah, this is going to be an umpire's review. We're late in the game. Mike Martin. Winters is the first base umpire. Wong was going. He out. Yep. Cardinals already used their challenge and lost it on a play at second base. This is an umpire review. And it looks like Mike Winters got it right at first base. This ought to be a very quick video review in New York. And the call stands. Wong is picked off. And the Braves are up for the eighth inning. Diaz Homer puts the Cardinals in front, 5-4. Games on TV. You can now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store and download the free Fox Sports Go app. Log in and stream the Braves wherever you go. Big crowd hoping to chop their way to an Atlanta lead now. The Braves led 4-0, but now the Cardinals with a 5-4 advantage heading to the home eighth. And it's back out. And as I said, the one real strength of this Cardinal team is their bullpen. It'll be tough to do for Atlanta tonight. They'll have to do it against some good arms. 
Segrist yeah. delivers a strike to Hector who is one for three. He singled home a run in the Braves third. He is struck out looking twice. Braves do not have a hit since the third inning tonight. As you see Brandon Moss in at first. And a shot foul to the right side 0 and 2. Little flare to the right side. Wong drifts out, says he has it and does. One away. Fans, the skip and Pete Bobblehead, Toby Mack in concert. Mark in the park are just a few of the great giveaways and events planned this year, part of our season long celebration of the final season at Turner Field. Check a full calendar of Braves events at Braves.com slash promotions and get your tickets today. Tyler Flowers has walked, singled home a run, and flied out. That bobblehead's a great looking bobblehead, by the way. Only one thing could have improved it, and that was if one of my dad's calls could have been, Glenn, I just said that. <laughs> or something about the 9 11 guys at the <laughs> DOT. <laughs> that too. <laughs> but, uh,. <laughs> Great looking bobblehead and a couple of great calls from my dad and the legendary Pete Van Weeren, whom we miss dearly. So that's coming up on the promotional calendar. We hope you'll join us for that here at the ballpark. Two balls, no strikes. Pirates have come back on Cincinnati. They lead 6 5 over the Reds at the Great American Ballpark. Pittsburgh unbeaten. Just missed inside. Three and one. All help accepted late in the game. Can Segrist put Flowers aboard? Not with that pitch. Full count. Oh, took a little off. Again, 81 games last year. Half of their games, he was in a major. He was the major league leader in that category, but 74 and two thirds innings. So a lot of that was just a fraction of an inning against lefties primarily. Yeah, but that's got to be tough too because you know he was coming in late in the game. Okay, go get Joey Votto. Go get Anthony Rizzo. Go get Freddie Freeman. Bryce Harper. Bryce whatever the case right. might be. Yeah. But again, a cardinal record for strikeouts by a left handed reliever. Think of all the players they've had in their organization. 41st round draft pick in June 08. Three and two for Flowers. And he was all over that pitch and smacked it back to the screen. If he reaches, one would expect a, a pinch runner for him, but the Braves are only carrying two. Again, the 3 2, and Segrist steps off. And I should, should say only two catchers. Right. Remember, one of their best pinch runners is already in the game because mm -hmm. Enciarte hurt a hamstring running down the line in the first inning. But Flowers has to reach first before we worry about that. We could use Jace Peterson, we could use Jeff Francoeur, Kelly, Kelly Johnson. You could use a pitcher too if you wanted to, but cold night, that might not be the best course of action. You know, saving that guy and Francoeur already has a helmet, saving them. As pinch hitters get near the bottom of the order. Oh. 
Fly ball center. Richick is going to have plenty of room to catch that. And there's the second out. How about the 3 1 off speed pitch change up and now a 3 2 breaking ball? Not too shabby. Not just a rear back and fire guy. Well, and how about Mike Matheny? Got Oliveira, Flowers, and Beckham, and he's keeping his lefty in there. Well, to... in his defense, I, he's probably saying, I, I think in a one run game, I don't want to see Kelly Johnson. I don't want to see uh, Jeff Francoeur just yet. Francoeur's out on deck right now if Beckham can reach. And a swing and a miss. I think it's a lot of respect for Kelly Johnson right now. Gordon's 0 for 3 tonight. His first start as a Brave. Tied him up inside. Even count. Now to play again. One ball, two strikes. In the St. Louis night, they'll have the eight, nine, and one hitters scheduled. Beckham, the Braves' eighth place man. And it's fouled at the plate. Haven't seen the 95, 96 from Seegers tonight. He's been in the low 90s, but he sure has made some good pitches down in the zone. And as we saw, a couple of good breaking balls to Flowers after. Flowers got ahead in the count. Broken bat and out to short. Throw to first in time and Segrist with flawless work over an inning and one third. Five four St. Louis through eight. Continues at Turner Field tonight. 30 games in 30 days. It's 5-4 St. Louis. Time for tonight's Toyota Tweet of the Week. This week's question is, what are you most excited about this season? Tweet us at Fox Sports South using hashtag Braves Excitement, and your answer could be read during our Braves Live postgame show, which will be hosted by Jerome Jurinovich and Matt Diaz. Braves Live presented by Xfinity. Hopefully, after a ninth inning comeback by the Braves in game one of this series. Saw that uh, poster from some fans from Indiana. Nice to have them here, hopefully, for the whole weekend. 
And you and I saw a father and son as we were walking in tonight from Chattanooga who said they were here for the whole series. So great to have everyone here. And our second look at John Gant, who pitched a good inning his first time out in the big leagues on Wednesday. Had a strikeout. If you weren't with us, he's a guy who has a funny delivery. And he said even he can't explain it, but it's a double knee kick. You're about to see it. Wonder what Tim McCarver thinks about or will think about Mr. Gant's motion. He's working the game on the Cardinals side tonight. Tim's seen just about every kind of delivery you can see in the game of baseball. Right. Except this one. There's Tim. Out of Memphis, Tennessee, a Cardinal great in his day. And Jerko takes a strike. Jerko one for three. That's the good news. Bad news is two errors at short to start the game. Braves couldn't cash that in though in the first. He has to have that run. A double knee kick. Carver probably over there saying, you know, I remember Bob Gibson didn't do that. Or Barney Schultz. Yeah. Nice change up. Or actually that's the Vulcan, wasn't it? Yep. Puts the baseball between his middle and ring fingers. And he got Jerko to swing and miss. There's out number one. Vulcan again. See the baseball between his middle and ring fingers. You talk about taking some practice to get used to that release point. This is Greg Garcia of the Cardinals. He'll hit for Segrist, who is awfully impressive. Oh, he's got to like his chances. Both pinch hitters have hit homers tonight for the Cardinals, yeah. so he figures to make it three. Hazel Baker in the St. Louis seventh. Diaz in the eighth off Eric O'Flaherty. Garcia led the Cardinal club in pinch hits last year. He had nine of them. That one just a little short of the plate. That Vulcan didn't quite make it back to the ship. Swing, drive, deep right. The Cardinals pinch hitters are three for three with three home runs. Are you kidding me? Wow. I've never seen that in a big league ball game. Nor have I. He was sitting on that one. Stayed back, waited, looking for it, launched it. The Cardinals taking out a little frustration from Pittsburgh on the Braves here in Atlanta tonight. Three pinch hit homers have erased what was a 4 nothing Braves lead. It's now 6 4 Cardinals. Mike Matheny, the early leader for manager of the year. Wow. Second career pinch hit homer for Garcia. And Gant misses low to Matt Carpenter. Three balls, no strikes. I'm sure our friends at Stats Inc. will be looking this up after the game. When's the last time a team had three pinch hit homers? 
I think I've actually seen back to back pinch hit homers, but I don't ever recall seeing three, Some three, three for three. Right. Yeah. Like I said, I guess he figured he liked his chances. There's a strike. It's full count. Carpenter still alive. As that one's fouled back, still three and two. Game two of the series tomorrow night. Julio Tehran, Carlos Martinez, first pitch 7-10. Braves live on the air at 6-30. Presented by Xfinity. Julio looked very good on opening day. Strike three inside corner. Carpenter couldn't pull the trigger. He's the second out. And that'll bring up Stephen Piscotti. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. That includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Go to MLB.TV for details. Piscotti's 0 for 3. That's drilled center. Stubbs on the run. Warning track. Wall. See you later. Piscotti hits a homer. A rocket shot to center field. And St. Louis's lead is now 7-4. That was not a Vulcan. That was a fastball. And again, not much doubt about that one either. So St. Louis with seven unanswered runs. Leads by three. And Matt Holiday looks. And a ball inside. They have three RBIs tonight from the ninth spot in the order. Two of them pinch hit homers, and the other by Garcia, his second time up. Yeah, that'll help you in the National League game, won't it? The Cardinals scored seven total runs in their three games against the Pirates. They have scored seven runs tonight. With this lead, barring a Braves comeback, they'll avoid that 0-4 start we mentioned. Last happened to a Cardinal team in 97. One ball, two strikes. Scotty Diaz Hazel Baker and Garcia have homered and Holiday swings and misses and that'll retire the side Gantz strikes out the side but the Cardinals hit two solo homers and extend their lead heading to the home ninth.
down to their last three outs in game one of our series. Fans, the Kroger four game plan is a great way to see your Braves during this final season at Turner Field. Save off the regular game price and custom build your four game plan or select a popular plan like the bobblehead, Friday night fireworks, or Sunday kids' day plans today. Go to Braves.com slash four game. Not an easy task ahead because Trevor Rosenthal is on for St. Louis. And this is about as good as it gets in the National League in terms of closers. This guy kind of served an apprenticeship as a setup guy, but everybody knew he was going to be their closer at some point and has been the last couple of years. Throws 96 to 99 with a changeup. Not too many sliders. Rosenthal set a Cardinals single season save record 48 saves in their 100 win season. First man in Cardinal history with back to back save seasons of 45 or more. They've had some good men at the end of the games too. Lee Smith and Jason Isringhausen come to mind. Bruce Suter. And he'll face Kelly Johnson who's. A bit tardy on that 93 mile an hour fastball. One ball, two strikes. Chilly night, ninth inning. Kelly, go get him. Better go up in the cage and get a few swings under the stadium. Swing and a miss at 95 and in on his hands. Nasty pitch. Rosenthal has out number one in the ninth. And we go back to the top of the order. And Drew Stubbs. It's kind of it's just such a weird game tonight. Braves reached on, well, on consecutive errors to start the game by Jerko at short, but couldn't score. Then they get four runs on five hits in the third inning. Who knew that that was the only inning they were going to get a hit? No hits since. And then the Cardinals with three pinch hit homers tonight. Turn it over to their bullpen, and they're two outs away from their first win. Ball one strike. If you missed it, Ender Inciarte, a left hamstring strain running the bases in the first inning. He pulled up right at the first base bag after a Jerko error and immediately looked into the dugout and was taken out for precautionary reasons. He's listed as day to day. And you know the Braves will be extremely careful with. A hamstring in the early weeks of the season with weather so cold and it's going to be cold here tomorrow night and very cold in Washington where the Braves head on our first leg of the upcoming road trip. Two and two for Stubbs and he fought it off. Strike three at the knees. Stubbs took it, and he's out number two. Hope you'll join us after our game for Braves Live. We'll recap tonight's action. We'll talk with skipper Freddy Gonzalez. We'll head to the clubhouse for player reaction on Braves Live, hosted by Jerome Jurinovich and Matt Diaz tonight and presented by Xfinity. Bar hopes to keep it alive for Freddie Freeman, who's on deck. A strike. Cardinals are trying to chase down a rare win tonight in Atlanta. This has not been a happy place for the Cardinals. All time, they're 24 and 43 at Turner Field. That surprised me when I saw that. 
They'll be happy when the Braves close the doors on this place and take their chances next year at SunTrust Park. Crowd tonight 24,824. Hoping to keep it alive. Bouncing ball to Wong. Took the in between hop and the Cardinals have earned their first win of the season. Final score St. Louis 7, Atlanta 4. The Cardinals bench was the bomb squad tonight. Three for three with three pinch hit homers. Cardinals erased a 4 0 Atlanta lead in the third. The Braves hitless over their final six innings tonight. Cardinals 7, Atlanta 4, Braves 0 3 on the season. We'll recap it right after this.